So I guess not many of you are checking in on the homepage of my YouTube channel regularly and just wait for the notification or in other ways that YouTube informs you of a new video that's being released. But if you would do that, you will see that the channel got a major update recently. There is a new channel art, so channel banner, so to say, in which not only my picture is shown, but also actually the value proposition. So in other words, in a few lines, even one word, what the channel is about, for who it is, and what the beliefs are that we share here with the general public. But you'll see also new playlists that organizes the whole channel and the more than 800 videos I have up to now. So if you haven't seen that, maybe it's worth a check or just a visit there. But there is one thing I'm going to share with you, especially in this video, that's the video trailer, the channel trailer, so to say. That's a video, oftentimes not so long a length, that new visitors to the channel get to see. So if you subscribe to the channel, you will not see it anymore, a reason to more that I share it with you here. I think it's important to share that channel trailer also with you because it explains a little bit the new directions that the channel will be heading towards in this year. More on that after the little video. If you ever had serious questions about some crazy metronome numbers given by composers like Beethoven, Chopin, Schumann, Czerny and so many others, questions about why professionals have to study six months on the Mozart sonata that in his time was supposed to be sight readable, if you ever had physical injuries even because hours and hours of practicing wasn't enough to make your fingers do what you were supposed to do, then I have good news for you, because there is a way of enchaining you completely from today's post-industrial mechanical and technical focus. I have better news even, since you can set your inner musician completely free, exactly by reconnecting to the true values of the masses of the past. I remember back in my conservatory days in Amsterdam, having courses in both organ and piano. There was this one moment where I connected a Bach organ piece with the Mozart sonata I played. So close in time, and yet such a big difference in tempo and performance practice, with no answers by anyone why. And since that moment, I started to reconnect Beethoven to Bach, Chopin to Beethoven. In other words, connect those composers again to the tradition they came from. And that process has been truly transformational to me, as it can be for you as well. In dozens of videos you'll find here, I will theoretically back up this simple solution that musicians in those days still use the metronome as in physics today. A full swing, going from left to right and back, is one cycle. So half note 88, for example, is not 1, 2, 3, 4, but 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And you soon will realize that the Waldstein Sonata is not out of reach anymore. That those damn Czerny etudes work just great in the tempo this teaching genius gave, and are pretty nice to play even. That that Bach invention feels suddenly so close to a Mozart Allegro. of that comes with a completely new way of performing, which perhaps is the most exciting part of it all. So join me on this journey and reconnect again to the ancient times of horse-powered speeds. Hang out with me and other musicians that are building a library full of musical experiments each Monday at 7.30 pm Central European time in the YouTube premiere. And stay tuned for our regular videos that touch upon a variety of topics from theoretical explanation of this forgotten metronome practice to showing you how to deal with this new way of playing. Best way to stay tuned, of course, is to subscribe to this channel so YouTube knows you're part of the team. And if you do that, we'll see each other soon again.
So perhaps you have seen in the channel art or in the banner or in the video that there is one word that I have been focusing on a lot, which is the word unchained. And I'll explain that a little bit more here. But to just give you the the history of this word, actually it the first person who came up with this idea of this new word was Lorenz Guardian. When we were discussing and thinking about a title for the new book, he thought about the Endfessel, the Klassiker, and that's a great title in German, which explains exactly what we are doing. But in German, you have the term Klassiker, meaning the classic composers. That's not even the same in English, but in the Klassiker in German means especially Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, and that era. And Fesselt, I thought, was a strong image, like you've liberated, literally, those composers by the today's mainstream performance practice, which is focused so much on technical issues and on mechanical issues. So speeding up tempo, practicing more, uh, overcoming speed or tempo issues, which make music kind of very difficult, if not unplayable. So you liberate those composers literally from that practice by bringing you back to the time of the pre-industrial time, so to say, where indeed the horsepower driven speeds were still there. But we were thinking about not only a word that could express and fesselt in English, which I think unchained is pretty close, unchain you from something, but also what is actually the thing that we are doing here on the channel? What is the target audience? Are we just delivering a message that would bring that music of the past back to us, which of course is what we are doing? Don't get me wrong. Or is there a level beyond that? And when we were discussing this, Lorenz and I, also Alberto and I, with the people that work behind the scenes, and there are actually quite a lot already now, we were thinking, actually, the person or the group of persons that we are targeting the most are musicians. What we are doing with the research that we present, with recordings that we present to you, is actually giving you a pass, a reason even, to escape from that today's practice in which you all, we all, are forced to play in more or less one way. Yes, you have the historical in front performance practice, as I call it, and you have the mainstream performance practice, but basically they share the same value in speeding up the tempi as much as we can. And so if you are a student that wants to have a bachelor or master's degree, you'll have to play like that. If you want to have concerts on the main uh, stage, you will have to play like that because that practice is not only the mainstream practice, whether it is HIP, so historically informed performance practice, or just mainstream, that practice is something that people tell you is also the way those composers played. So there is a moral value that people today attach to this way of playing. But what we do here on the channel, and certainly also with the book when it's published, is showing you that if you as a musician or as a music lover want to be true to the original or the authentic idea, if that's possible to reconstruct, but come as close as possible, that you actually have to pass or go back in time and leave the industrial revolution time behind, go back to the time before, and there was a different way of performing, a performance practice that is way slower. Of course it is. How else could it be? And so suddenly there is something that you can take as a musician from what we are doing to unchain you from this today's performance practice, mainstream, conservatories, academies, universities, who force upon you to walk the same walk that they have walked for decades. And suddenly there is something that you can say, listen, I want to be as close as possible as a musician to Beethoven. I want to do justice to Chopin's music. And this is the way that I'm going to do that. It's a different path than the conservatories and the university tells me. But here is the evidence. Here is a book. Here is a YouTube channel. Here are performances of people who show that it's not only possible, but highly likable that it was be, has been like that. And so unchained, unchain you literally from this today's performance practice, university, academic world, whatever. Free you from that, liberate, it, liberate you from that. And so hence the one word on the channel, the one word you will see also on the book, unchained.
you could say if I would use three words, it would be the Unchained Musician. And so we go a little bit deeper, a little bit further back than just focusing on the music, but it is by reconnecting you to that music, to the performance practice of that time, that you can rightfully justify just go beyond today's focus on speed, on technique, on mechanical issues and reconnect to what we think are the authentic voices of that time. So I think this refocus is a major one. You will see in the future, I will still make videos on tempo research because that's way too interesting. It's a kind of intriguing as well. But you will see on the channel also a little bit more focus on What's the implication of WBMP? How do you play on such a forte piano? How do you play on the clavichord this way? Uh, what about accentuation? What's the importance of fingerings? How do you use a sustaining pedal? Is there a difference in the way we're doing that today? And I can tell you there is. Also for us here on this channel, now with Alberto, but more musicians will come, we'll have to figure out things that we are don't know, that we just forgotten, that we have to look up again. So you will see more practical videos together with the more theoretical ones. And I know many of you are waiting for that, as we are also thinking about making online courses, even having a membership site on our channel, where you can come and have a community waiting for you, share your performances even with other people, have lessons from the musicians that are involved here on this platform. As we've recently recorded the Opus 38 and the trio setting with this pianoforte, so that's a clarinet, a cellist and a forte piano, and the trio setting of uh, the septet by Beethoven, it's a, it's a trio version that Beethoven himself made. So there you have, have a clarinet player, a cellist, and there will be more musicians. They come to the platform and they have to figure out how to perform in this way because there are challenges that has to be overcome. And so by sharing that with you, you can learn along our way, along our journey. So that's the reason why I had this call to action. Join us on this journey because it is a journey. This is not a platform where you have with the snap of your finger the answers on all your questions, but you can see how we develop this performance practice from actually within our daily lives. And that, I believe, is a message that can resonate with a lot of musicians, that can be helpful to a lot of you, that can be stopped indeed this this pain you would you wouldn't believe how many pianists keep this from themselves that they wake up in the morning and just have physical pain by starting to play because they overburden their their body so we can liberate literally you from that and that's a message that's that's something that energizes me so much and again goes beyond only reconstructing the music in the context of its time. So give us a little bit of time for this refocus. And again, don't worry if you like the things that are on this channel, they will just stay the same. But talking about the performance practice and the implications, I think also reconnecting the channel to what was before much more than now. The times I was sitting at the clavichord and just talking about sharing with you what, was, what I was processing while playing and practicing, we had a lot of those videos, as for instance, this one here on the C minor variations, where I just sit at the piano and share you some aspects of the performance. And as you have the practicing sessions that now move to Patreon, so there you have me one-on-one -on -one interacting with you there. If that's something for you, head over to Patreon. There's a link here and in the description box. I couldn't be doing this without the help of my patrons. Thank you for even considering that. And for now, thanks for watching. See you soon again.